Movie Club. Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there that are moms or celebrated with your moms. I celebrated with my mom today. That's why no weekend watch video. Spending time with mom today. So I will upload that tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. So you're going to get two videos tomorrow, weekend watch and what's new for blue. But we're talking about get out tonight. We are talking about get out. One of the most original unique ideas, very awesome to the horror genre. It's not even like typical horror. It's more psychological. And that's what makes it even more scary than usual because it is psychological and it's a mind effing movie that could this really happen in real life? You know what I mean? Like this could possibly happen. This could possibly really happen. That's what's scary. So we're going to be talking about Get Out. I want to know what you thought of it. If it's your first time watching it, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. What did you like about this movie? What did you not like about this movie? Maybe what you would change about the movie. I'm not sure. I don't think I would change anything about it because it's pretty brilliant. But let's talk about it, guys. Let's talk about it. We only have two likes though. That's a problem for me. Slam that like button if you have not already. Please do so. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. You guys know how this goes. All right. So I will get to talking about who is here and conversations, but really quick recap of Get Out if you guys have not seen it, but you want to join into the live. So Get Out stars Daniel Kaluuya. He just won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for Judas and the Black Messiah. He was also nominated for this as well. We should have known that eventually he would go and win an Oscar. He's so goddamn talented. So Jordan Peele, who is known for comedy, we all know him for comedy. He wrote and directed and produced this movie called Get Out. He went on to win Best Original Screenplay at the Oscars for this film. And it centers around Chris, played by Daniel Kaluuya's character. And he's going to meet his girlfriend's family. Girlfriend played by, what's her name? What's her name? Something Williams. Ash, no, not Ashley Williams. I forget. The, the chick from Girls, the TV show. Um, <laughs> she's white. Chris is black. Is this going to be an issue? I don't know. They don't know. He doesn't know. So she brings him home to the family and everything seems to be like, okay, going all right at first. But then you're starting to get these clues that something isn't quite right. The family isn't acting completely normal. They kind of have servants, if you will. It's kind of like an awkward situation. But then as the movie goes on, things start to unravel and you begin to discover that this family has a different agenda in mind. And it's absolutely chilling. The most chilling part of the movie for me when I first watched it was the auction. The auction scene when the camera is panning away from the girlfriend's father and he's up there going like this and, you know, making hand signals and hand signs. And it pans away and you see the picture of Chris, of Daniel Kaluuya right next to him. He's auctioning him off. I chill, total chill, went up my spine when I saw that for the first time. I could not even believe what I was watching. And it just goes from there. It's an absolute psychological ride that is unforgettable. But what's also brilliant about the script is that because Jordan Peele is known for comedy, he had to throw in the humor in there. And I think it was really appropriate for him to do because that way you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of a lightened mood. I feel like if the horror or, or if the humor element was not in this movie, it would have taken a really, really dark twisted turn. I don't know with the humor element, it kind of had that balance where it wasn't just all serious all the time. We needed that breakup. We needed that balance in between there. So he really was brilliant in writing the script with having the best friend being the comedic element, not there with him, but over the phone. So we, because the best friend, I forget his name in the movie, I'm sorry. The best friend is kind of like us, like as if we were talking to him, like, what are you doing? I told you not to go there. Why are you there? You know what I mean? So it was good to see and hear that comedic element and 
And I just thought that was very smart of Jordan Peele to do. So let me know your thoughts in this chat, in this entire live. Did you enjoy Get Out? Did you not? Would you change it? What was the best scene for you? Allison Williams. I just remembered her name. Allison Dam Williams. Okay. <laughs> the girlfriend. She was creepy as hell. Okay. That scene where she's at the end. Well, there's two scenes where she really portrays Psycho. The one scene where she's eating her goddamn Fruit Loops with the milk on the side and having like just a little bite of a, just a little bite of a Fruit Loop. That was crazy and psychotic. Okay, who eats cereal like that? That's crazy. And then sipping the milk. But that showed how fake she was being the entire time when she was in her relationship with Chris. Because when she was in her relationship, she seemed very cool and chill. She's not. You can tell that in her real life, she is a complete type A personality by the way she's eating those Fruit Loops and drinking that milk. It's a complete 180 turn. But then also at the very end when Chris is defending himself and she's, you know, she's in the driveway and she's down. She got shot and he goes to wring her neck. That little smirk that she gives. Oh, I really want to know if she came up with that on her own while filming it. Or did Jordan Peele say, hey, do this. You know what I mean? I want to, I, I'm hoping that she did it naturally because if she did god damn what a bitch okay what a bitch like when she did that little smirk i was like ooh, ooh, you just want to smack the shit out of her you know what i mean you just oh but damn she was good she was definitely the right person cast for that role so i love that part as well so we're going to talk about all this tonight let me know your thoughts about get out what you loved what you hated what you would have changed what was your favorite scene was this your first time watch of it? Let me know. And per usual, half past, I will let you know what movie will we, we will be discussing next Sunday. I already have it picked out right here next to me. All right, we got six likes. What's going on? Slam that like button if you have not already. Please do. All right, here we go. First up is Martin Gomez. Hey, Martin, what is going on? I know you missed last time's chat, but welcome to this one. Saying hello, everybody. How's everyone? Can't wait to see what the next movie is. Martin, hold your horses. We got to talk about Get Out first. All right, Mr. Scott is here. What's up, everyone? Hey, wonderful. I'm ready to talk about this surprising movie. Awesome, awesome. Chris Kinsella is here. Hey, everyone. What's going on, Chris? Tony is here. Tony just posted a trip to Bull Moose. I watched that video, Tony. Which one did you go to? Because I'm really curious because the one I went to did not have as many steelbooks. That one had a shit ton of steelbooks. I want to know what location you went to. So message me and let me and give me the address because I am very curious. Okay. Also, Tony does have his YouTube channels, Tony's Movies and more. If you guys are not subscribed already, please go over there and subscribe to his channel and watch all of his videos. He's doing so well. He's actually almost at 100 subscribers already. So congratulations, Tony. All right, Nelly Olson commented, happy to be here. Hello all, this is my very first live ever. I'm excited to be here. Well, welcome, Nelly. Welcome, welcome. Justin Kirby, I might be bouncing around tonight, but here for now, well, bounce away, Mr. Kirby. That's all good. Okay. Yeah, I put a thumbnail in, Rodney. What are you talking about? Michael Singletary, hashtag early squad. That's right. You guys are so early. All right. <clears throat> All right. Martin, can't wait to talk about get out. And saying get out is so brilliant. All right. Justin Kirby saying next Sunday, I'm doing something I'll likely regret. My nine-year-old nephew wants to see Spiral from the Book of Saw. So he's taking him. Uh, you might regret that. You might regret that. <laughs> Thuvu, hey, Susan, just dropping in as I have not seen Get Out yet, but I'm not a fan of horror movies anyway. Thuvu, you know what? Get Out is like right on the cusp of a being a horror movie because it's more psychological, more thriller, if anything. It's really not graphic as far as like blood, guts, gore. It's not like that at all. It's very, very mental. It's a, and it, it's an extremely slow burn. Like three quarters of the movie 
you're getting knowledge. You're taking in what's happening and everything is unraveling. You're putting pieces together. All the action really doesn't happen until like the last 15, 20 minutes of the movie. And it's really not even that bad. So definitely give Get Out a chance, Thuvu. You really, really should. Okay. Jeff is here saying, I love Get Out, but I love the sequel, Us. Well, Us is not a sequel <laughs> to Get Out. It is the next movie by Jordan Peele. Um, if I were to pick and choose between the two, I would choose Get Out over Us. But I enjoyed Us as well, and I liked where he wanted to go with that, but I did have a few problems with Us. But overall, I enjoyed Us. I mean, Lupita Nyong'o's performance, absolutely fantastic. But we're talking about Get Out, not Us. <laughs> we can talk about Us another time. Okay. Michael Singletary is here and smash the like button. Yes, everyone slash, slam that like button if you have not already. Okay. Yeah, Us is not a sequel to Get Out. It is not a sequel, okay? <laughs> Destiny's here. What's going on, Destiny? All right, she's doing good. Just trying to finish classwork. Oh, that's always good, finishing up that classwork. All right. Justin Kirby saying, Get Out is such a good movie, but I liked Us more. Chromatica, hello, Sue. Happy to be here. Hello, Chromatica. Thank you so much for joining. Destiny saw Get Out in the theaters when it first came out. Chills, literal chills. I would have loved to have seen this movie in the theater. Unfortunately, at that time, I was not really embracing like the horror movies slash like really mental, psychological, like movies like that. So I didn't go and see this in the theater. I wish I had. That's an experience I wish I would have had in the theater. If they ever re-release it. Maybe I will. I don't know. But uh, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. All right, Martin is saying that to him, I love Get Out. Daniel Kaluuya did the greatest performance ever. Well, I don't know. Judas and the Black Messiah, man. So good, so good. He looks like a baby in Get Out. Do you see the difference between how he looks in Get Out and Judas? I don't know. Like, he looks so young in Get Out. All right. Nellie Olson is saying, like this movie, but enjoyed Us as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed Us. Us is a good movie. It's not a, it's not a bad movie. It just didn't live up to the hype. I mean, Get Out had such hype around it when it came out. It was nominated for Oscars. It won Best Original Screenplay. And then everyone was so amped up for Jordan Peele's next film when Us didn't really deliver in a bang like Get Out did. People are like, oh, this movie sucks or it's lackluster. It doesn't suck. It just has issues and problems but nitpicky issues and problems. Okay. Menno, Menno Saran. Hey, Susan. Menno Saran. Hello. 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 Destiny saying, wow, at Justin Kirby. I have only seen people say that like Get Out more than us. Why do you like it more? I would like to know the reason. Why, why do you like us more than Get Out? I'm just curious. I just want to know. All right. Michael Singletary is saying that without the humor, it would have been antebellum. I don't know. I haven't seen Antebellum. I heard bad things about it, so I'm not going to go there. Not sure. <laughs> not sure. Menno Surin loved Get Out. Awesome, awesome. Cool guys here. Did see the movie Get Out. Good movie. Destiny agrees with me. Yeah, the Fruit Loop scene was so weird. <laughs> LOL. So weird. And what I never noticed before until last night when I rewatched it, and this is why rewatches are so important, because you pick up on the little details that you did not see before. I always concentrated on her eating the Fruit Loops and her drinking the milk and looking psycho. Last night for the first time when I was watching it, I noticed that behind her, behind her, on the wall behind her, she actually hung up all the pictures of her and the victims that he found in the shoe box when he was going through. They're all in frames and they're all behind her. I would never noticed that before. Isn't that crazy? Who else missed that? <laughs> Who else missed that? Okay. Sydney Eubanks is here. Hey, Susan. Hey, what's going on, Sydney? Thank you for joining. All right. Cool guy picked up the movie Speed on 4K. That is awesome. All right. Justin Kirby. 
Mom and mom and him had some yummy barbecue today. Chicken, macaroni and cheese, baked beans. Ooh, that sounds good. To answer your question, Destiny, I just enjoyed the more sci-fi stuff. There is nothing wrong with that. You love what you love, and that's it. That's what I always say. You love what you love. No one is to judge. No one is to judge anyone for anything because what you like is what you like. It may not be my cup of tea, but it's yours. Uh, we had a wonderful Mother's Day. Took mom out. Gave her some Bath and Body Works today for gifts. A candle with the, with some hand soaps. She completely loved it. My dad got her a plant. Uh, then we took her out to eat. Tonight was my first time in a restaurant in about 14 to 15 months. Can you believe that? So it was epic. I had a drink. That's the reason I did not film Weekend Watch today. Because my face lights up like a Christmas tree when I have one drink. It's so embarrassing. So, and I had a daiquiri. I mean, it wasn't even like a margarita with tequila or anything. We went to a Mexican restaurant um, and had my favorite meal there. Oh my God, I missed it. But anyway, that's the reason why I didn't film Weekend Watch. Because this was red as a tomato, okay? So I will be filming it either tonight or tomorrow. I will upload it tomorrow along with what's new for Blue. Don't worry. We will have that content. Okay. Kevin5012 loves Get Out. There we go. Destiny needs to watch Tony's video. Sorry, I went on a little tangent about what we ate for dinner tonight. Okay. Mid-Level Media is here. Mid-Level in the house. If you guys are fans of Mid-Level Media, just so you guys know, he created a new channel with his wife where they review... TV shows or movies, potentially. They do reviews together, which is absolutely fantastic. Wonderful thing to do with your spouse. It is called Married With Media. So if you guys want to do your homework. so Okay, okay so subscribe to <laughs> Married With Media and then Tony's Movies and More. There's your homework. There you go. After this live, go subscribe. Okay. So mid-level saying, Susan, this was a great choice for this week's movie club. Top three horror films of the 21st century. Well, thank you, mid-level. Thank you, Ken. I always call him mid-level. His name is Ken, of course. Thank you so much, Ken. All right. Michael Duckworth Jr. Hello, hello. Hey, Susan. Hope you are doing fine. Happy Mother's Day to your mom and all the mothers out there. Thank you, Michael. Hey, Destiny. Hey, Tony P. That's the way I eat my Fruit Loops as well. Susan, LOL, love this movie so much. Hey, if that's the way you eat your Fruit Loops, I am not going to judge you whatsoever. Not whatsoever. Nope. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day to my mother. Thank you so much. She had a drink. She kind of passed out because she hasn't had a drink in over a year <laughs> because of her surgery and all of her medication. So she got a little tipsy off of one drink. So I'm not sure she's going to be popping into the live tonight. Last time I saw her, she was snoozing away. So we may not see her. But I did watch this movie with her last night. She's never seen it. She loved it. She thought it was really, really good. Very creative. Okay. My throat's getting a little scratchy. I need some Gatorade. Not sponsored by Gatorade, but I would love if Gatorade wanted to sponsor. There we go. That's better. Okie dokie. Kevin5012. I love in the film how Chris, uh, how Chris, uh, suspense changed when he kept interacting with the other black people at the family house event. It's like he knew something wasn't right. Well, yeah. I mean, based on the way they looked alone, they don't, black people don't dress like that. Okay. I could say that right off the bat. Okay. Lakeith Stanfield. Now, I had forgotten that that was Lakeith Stanfield. I was like, well, <laughs> mind blown. I forgot he was in this movie. So when he turned around, he was dressed like that. I was like, mm -mm, something is not right. They do not dress that way. So Chris knew automatically. Plus he was like married to like a 50 or 60 year old woman. I mean, come on, like, no, something is definitely not right. What I loved the most about this movie is that Jordan Peele wrote the character of Chris as being smart. He actually had a brain in his head. He was not stupid. We all have the, there's, it's like the horror movie trope where like your lead character, you know, is walking through the house with no lights on and you're screaming, turn on the light. You know, like 
He's not dumb. He is smart. He's putting all of these pieces together in his head. He's thinking and he's wondering what the hell is going on here. And at the very end, he proves that he is smart with how he defends himself, with attacking the family and getting out of there. <laughs> so that's what I love. Jordan Peele did not write a dumb leading character. He was smart. He has a brain in his head. All right. Cool guy saying happy Mother's Day to every woman in the chat. That is very nice of you. I'm, I'm a mom. I'm a cat mom. Okay. So I'm a mom as well. My little rascals didn't get me anything, but that's okay. All they can give me is their love and they do every day. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone's saying hi to mid-level. Destiny really thought Get Out was going to be more scary than it actually was. You would think so, right? You would think so, but the writing is more psychological. It's not graphic, gory. That's why I really enjoyed this one because this was a good one to like segue myself into the horror genre because like I said before, I really started watching and collecting the movies. Wasn't really all about it. I was very scared of it, but Get Out and Us, I will say, are are great little like baby steps to go into the horror genre. You know, I'm, I'm going like this, baby steps. Good baby steps to get your feet wet, you know, to just, you know, wow, this is really massively effed up. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it's just mind twisty. So I agree with you, Destiny, but I thought it was a good thing. Okay. Martin is saying, hey, Susan, you think I should go see Spiral because I want to go see it. I'm going for it. Should I regret it or should I do it? Martin, it all depends. I think you're young, Martin, if I'm correct. I think you're a little young. So I'm not sure you're old enough yet. I don't know. But if you think you can handle it, bring an adult to go with you. <laughs> it all depends. All right, we got 16 likes. Slam that like button. If you have not already, we have 33 people here. Slam that like button. That's half of you that haven't slammed. Slam it right now. All right. Destiny is saying the scene where Chris kills the dad was gross. I don't know. I thought the scene where he killed the brother was a little bit more gross. I don't know. They deserved it though. I mean, they deserved it with what they were doing. The brother was off the rails. I mean, he was like, whoo, like really cuckoo. Okay. All right. Nellie Olson is saying mid-level media is here. I enjoy your content mid-level. Yes. Mid-level. I get the stars. I get the YouTube stars in here all the time. Yes, I do. Owen movie 75. Is this your favorite performance by Daniel Kaluuya? No, it's Judas. Judas and the Black Messiah as of yet. I he Daniel Kaluuya is so goddamn talented. He will not let you down. Pretty much every single movie that he's been in, he has stood out for me. Obviously in Get Out, he was a standout performance in Widows. Widows was kind of an iffy movie. You know I love my Viola Davis. She was strong, but then Daniel Kaluuya just pulled your eye over off of her onto him. Like whatever scene he was in, you really paid attention. And he really just stole whatever scene that he was in. Queen and Slim, again, fantastic goddamn performance. Not enough people saw that film. If you guys haven't seen it, please watch it. It's fantastic. And then Judas is just, that's his best in my opinion. But he's not done. Clearly he's not done. Let's not forget he was in Black Panther as well. Hello. <laughs> he is a part of the MCU. Uh, just He's fantastic. He is just one of those actors that I'm going to look forward to watching his progressive body of work because literally every single thing that he's in is fantastic. Like he, his performances are so good. All right, Rich Barrett. Rich Barrett, I think you're new. Hello, hello. This uh, this film works because the bad guys are not typical clan racists like in Black Klansmen, which is a good film. I just like seeing liberal bigots as less as it's less cliched. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see where you're going with this. It's kind of like a topic I didn't want to really <laughs> go for a little bit, but since you brought it up, we'll talk about it. Um I mean, race definitely plays into this film. Chris is black. His girlfriend is white. 
it's a white family and then he shows up and there's, you know, there's black servants. I mean, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks bad. And then you figure out what's happening and they're, they're intentionally grabbing black people to be the bodies for these white people that want new bodies. They want to be younger. They have a medical problem or whatever it is. And they want, they want young, healthy bodies and they're, they're choosing black people. Like it, it's so messed up and so goddamn weird, but it's so like socially relevant because of what we're living with and what we're dealing with now and today. And Jordan Peele was really ahead of his time with writing this and, and creating this whole thing. And it really speaks volumes to how society can look at races and just, it's just, I don't want, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. So I'm going to stop right now, but it's an excellent point to bring up. Absolutely. All right. Mustang Midnight is here saying hello. All right. Destiny saying, would anyone say the beginning of Get Out was kind of scary? Every time I watch it, it makes me jump. The beginning where Lakeith Stanfield is kidnapped pretty much is what you're saying. Um, my mom jumped. That's for sure. <laughs> when when uh, the, uh, the brother, you know, he's the one that kidnapped. That's his part of the family. He's the one that that kidnaps. The sister is the Fruit Loop eating psycho is the one that like targets them. She looks them up online. The brother is the one that snatches them. The dad is the doctor that actually does the procedure. And the mom is the one that hypnotizes all of them. So the whole family's involved. They all have a part <laughs> in what they're doing. God, it's so messed up. All right. Oh, my mom's here. Oh, she's awake. How was your drink, mom? You passed out a little bit now, didn't you? It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, Bonnie Festa's in the house. She had one drink and she passed out. It was so cute with her clothes on. Okay. <laughs> all right. Mr. Scott is saying favorite moment was Chris got, uh, when he got out and got his revenge on everyone and leaves with Rod. Well, Rod, that's his name. The best friend. Well, Rod, TSA Rod. Absolutely. He is so fantastic. Love that. Okay. Cool guy saying Mortal Kombat 2021 movies. Okay. We don't have to talk about Mortal Kombat. All right. Martin saying happy, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Blue Moxie. I like your name, Blue Moxie. Which Daniel Kaluuya performance do you prefer? Judas and the Black Messiah or Get Out? Oof. That's like Sophie's choice. That's like choosing between children. I mean, I can't I can't. They're completely different performances, Judas. I'll say Judas. Judas is like the stronger standout performance. So I'll say that. Okay. Tony's saying, I got to see Antebellum. It's really bad and pretentious. No, I don't want to see it. <laughs> no. All right. Destiny saying hi to my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Hope you had an amazing day. She did. She passed out. Hit that like button, guys. Hit that like button. Nellie Olson asking, who is Bonnie? Bonnie is my mother, Nellie. Bonnie Festa is my mother. She's like the mother of the, of the live chats. She just, you know, she pops in and her aura is all over the place. She's so, she's amazing and she's wonderful and she supports me with my channel and the growth and she's everything. So, that is my mommy. Kevin5012, I also like the symbolism throughout the film to American racial history, like how the cotton in the chair helped Chris escape. I wasn't even thinking about that, but good point. <laughs> good point. I just thought it was brilliant that, thank God that chair was used, because what if they had a regular chair that didn't have any cotton attached to it? You know what I mean? He would have been dead. So thank God they used that crummy chair where he could tear it apart and put the cotton in. But that was a great idea for him to do. Brilliant. But good pickup. Good pickup on that. I, I did not even think of it. That did not even cross my mind. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Everyone's saying hi to my mom. Guys, we have 40 people here, but 16 likes. Slam that like button. Slam it. Slam it. Thank you. Let's get that, get that up to over 20. Come on. Slam it right now. 
<laughs> okay. Michael Duckworth Jr.'s favorite scene was when Lakeith Stanfield's character Andre, I think, is telling him to get out with the nosebleed. Well, yeah, because that's when you know, all right, something's off the rails. <laughs> something's going on here. Something is amiss. And we are half past already. You know what time it is. And I have it right here in my hand. What is next week's movie club? Fantastic director. Fantastic actor in a long ass movie. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? It's The Wolf of Wall Street. The Wolf of Wall Street will be next week's movie club selection choice. There we go. I'm not really sure what streaming service this is on, if it's on any. Someone look it up and let me know. I didn't do my homework prior. I apologize. I actually chose this very last minute, extremely last minute, but Leo, Margot Robbie in one of her, is this her first performance or it's a very early performance for her, but it's a great, fantastic movie. I've watched it one time, so I am due for a rewatch for this. So Wolf of Wall Street for next Sunday, guys. Hope you like it. Hope you like it. All right. Destiny had Tex-Mex tonight. Oh, we had Mexican. Fabulous. All right, Tony is saying, same here, Susan. First time in a restaurant for Mother's Day in 15 to 16 months. I know, isn't it crazy? It's crazy. It was so surreal actually sitting in a restaurant eating chips and salsa. Like, it was nuts. All right, Mustang Midnight. Never seen Get Out. Is it good? Yes. Yes. I would not choose a bad film to be part of Movie Club. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Nellie Olson saying, it's great to see other you YouTube people in here. Yes, it is. Mustang Midnight, I'm a YouTube person, but I barely post anymore due to school, but I try to post once a month. Well, that's all that matters, as long as your subscribers know that. That's all. Jonathan Mills asking, hey, Susan, what was the first movie you saw in the theater? The first movie that comes to mind is The Little Mermaid animated good old disney animated classic the little mermaid that just really pops out in my memory bank okay yes howard the duck is going to have a steel book yes i did see that Alrighty. okay Video store review. If you enjoyed Get Out, I'd also recommend Rosemary's Baby. Very similar to, uh, very similar films in terms of intelligent protagonists surrounded by horror, which is mostly off screen. I've actually never seen that one. I think it's coming out to Blu-ray shortly, within a week or two, something like that. So maybe someday in the future. Okay. Eduardo is here asking, is nobody watching Selena season two, the series on Netflix? Um, I watched part one. I have not watched part two yet. I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I was kind of like indifferent about part one. I don't know. It's like we have the movie. Like, do we need a TV series? I just, you know, it just, it's a lot. And it takes up a lot of time because the episodes are like an hour almost. And I like shows that I can binge very quickly, like Shrill. Shrill episodes are like, what, 20, 25 minutes long? Boom! And they're done and you're good. You know, I like half hour episodes. The whole hour, ugh, it just takes too much time. I don't know. Okay. Chromatica, if there's no horror film, I'm excited this year. If there's any horror film, sorry, if there's any horror film I'm excited for this year, it's The Conjuring 3. Oof. But I'm quite intrigued with Woman in the Window. Yes. I mean... Jumo, Julianne Moore. I don't know if Jumo is going to catch on. It is the queen of breaking down. Well, Amy Adams is the one that's like breaking down and going crazy in the woman in the window because she's the woman in that window looking and looking. But I'm looking forward to the woman in the window. We've been waiting for this one for so long. I remember seeing the trailers for it so many times before movie theater shut down like a year ago. So I'm excited we're finally getting it. This coming weekend is stacked with new stuff coming on to streaming services. I will break it that all down in the weekend watch video for you guys. No worries. Mustang Midnight asking, do you like Stranger Things? Never seen it. 
Chromatica, it's nice to say Academy Award winner Daniel Kaluuya. Doesn't it? Academy Award winner Daniel Kaluuya. He's amazing. Michael Singletary, how about Harold and Maude for a movie suggest suggestion? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many people would be interested in Harold and Maude. I think it's for like a very specific audience. I've personally never seen it, but I've heard things about it. Um, I don't know. I try to stick to things that you guys would enjoy that would attract viewers. I don't know how many viewers Harold and Maude would attract. Not really sure. Okay. Menno Saran, what is your opinion on Get Out, Susan? It's great. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's fantastic. Vince LaFrancesca. Hey, Susan, what's going on, my man? I went like this because I think you're Italian by your last name. Uh, my Farmington neighbor. You're the one that lives in Farmington, right? So we are very close to each other. How you doing, Vince? Cool guy. Susan, did you see the movie Wrath of Man with Jason Statham is playing in theaters? Yes, I have seen it's playing. No, I did not go and see it. <laughs> I thought about it. I was I was I was gonna go on Friday, but I was tired from working on Friday. I might go and see it Tuesday. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. I'm not like jonesing to see it, even though it does star Jason Statham. You know I love me some Jason Statham. He's in the top five. But I don't know. I'm not sure. Mom saying she enjoyed the movie. Yes, Martin. My mom passed out. She just sleeping, not an actual pass out. <laughs> okay. Yes, they made, they made those drinks strong, didn't they, Ma? All right. Owen Movie 75. Did I enjoy the twist and get out or us more? Um that's difficult. That's difficult. I feel like Jordan Peele is like the new M. Night Shyamalan when it comes to twists in the movies. That's like kind of his thing of what he's going to be known for. I'm curious if his next movie is going to continue the theme of having a twist. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to say get out because I did go and see us in the theater. I dragged my best friend because I couldn't see it alone. Um, so Kim and I, went and saw us in the theater and I kind of guessed the twist before it happened. I had anticipated it. And then when it happened, I was like, okay, I guessed it and get out. You didn't know what was going on. Like you're trying, you're trying to piece it together. You had no clue of what was happening. So I'm going to say get out. Okay. Rob's here. Just want to say hi to my movie family and happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you for popping in, Rob. Thank you, thank you. Great Garlou is here. Hello, Susan. I found the steelbook of Dirty Dancing at the Target today. Fantastic. Excellent. That's actually a nice steelbook. I enjoy, I enjoy both of them because, you know, I double dipped. And I got both the Best Buy and the Target exclusive Dirty Dancing Steelbooks. I like them both. I mean, the more dynamic, beautiful one is the Best Buy. It just stands out. But then the Target one, it looks like it's painted on there. It's a little bit more artistic looking. I enjoy them both. I actually think the inside artwork of the Target is better than Best Buy. Plus it has the quote, no one puts baby in a corner, you know, that's iconic and classic. All right. Chromatica saying Get Out's final act was such an unexpected thrill ride. Absolutely. All right. I think everyone is digging Wolf of Wall Street because Tony's saying, yes, a Margot Robbie movie. LOL. Like I need an excuse to watch her with emojis with hearts all over. Yes. Tony's in love with Margot Robbie. Yes. Yes. Who is it? She's gorgeous and fantastic. <laughs> All right, Michael Singletary saying Wolf of Wall Street with a little wolf emoji. <laughs> uh, Menno Surin loves Margot Robbie. Michael Duckworth Jr. saying, I've never seen that movie. It was on HBO Max. Not sure if it's still there. Well, you might have to watch it now. All right, yes, Durant Cinema is a fantastic man. So anyone that is bad-mouthing him, go away. We don't want you here. <laughs> okay, we love Durant Cinema here. 
All right, Mr. Scott, thank you, Susan, for choosing Wolf of Wall Street. I was meaning to give it a watch because I've never seen it. Well, now you can. Fantastic. Okay. Owen Movie 75. I didn't understand the bingo scene. Why was there a picture of him? Because they were auctioning him off like he was a piece of property. They were doing like a silent auction because he was on the property. They didn't want him knowing what they were doing. I don't know if it's always a silent thing. I don't know. I have no idea. But they, he, I, the, the hand signals, like auctioning, the bing, I don't know what the bingo card, the bingo, I don't know. Instead of paddles, maybe, I have no idea. But it was an auction. He was auctioning off his body to someone that wanted to buy it. And the blind guy is the one that won. <laughs> God, it's so messed up. All right, Mustang Midnight just started watching that Disney Plus show on Friday. Oh, Game Changers. Oh, Mighty Ducks or whatever. All right. Okay. That's right. No bullying here. We have the no bullying policy. That is correct. Okay. Blue Moxie, thanks about my name. No problem. I th I think it's a great name. It's fantastic. My mom is saying, Owen, that's when everything clicked for me. They were bidding on him, not playing bingo. Yes, they were bidding on him. All right. Charles Ralph Olson. Hi, people. Sorry I'm late. I'm new here. Welcome, Charles. Welcome, welcome. I think you commented that you were going to show up. I think that was you. I'm glad you can make it and pop in. We're here for another like 20 minutes or so. So please hang out. Yes, everyone, welcome. Charles Ralph. Charles Ralph. Yes, I had to look. Charles Ralph. Welcome, welcome to the live. Okay. Mustang Midnight saying, Stranger Things is a pretty good show. It's one of my favorite Netflix series. I've never seen it. All right. Chromatica is saying, oh yeah, if you really like Get Out, I think you might find something out of Rosemary's Baby intriguing. Also, it is Julianne Moore's favorite film. Well, if it's Jumo's favorite film, then I got to watch it, I guess. I don't know. Rich, well, Rich Barrett saying, Rosemary's Baby has been on Blu-ray for a few years. It's a Criterion release. Oh, well, good to know. Then I'm not really sure why I saw it for a release for Blu-ray.com. Interesting. Not really sure. Okay. Vince is saying, yeah, I'm in Farmington. <laughs> we're, we're like, what, three towns away, two towns away? Doing great. Mom finally came home, gave her a gift. Well, that is fantastic. Owen Movie 75, did you have any problems with Get Out? Um, I don't think so. Get Out is pretty, pretty spot on. I don't even think I had any, any nitpicks about it because it was just so well done. Chromatica is saying the Wolf of Wall Street is not for kids. No, it's not. Wolf of Wall Street is not for kids. Vince saw uh, Wrath of Man on Friday. How was it, Vince? Please let me know. Great Garlou. Anyone else aware that the four Peanuts movies are coming to Blu-ray on May 18th? Well, don't spoil my weekend watch. Come on. Or my uh, new, what's new for Blue. <laughs> okay. Vince saw that in the IMAX theater. I never do IMAX because they don't have the comfortable seats. That's why. Okay. Oh my gosh, Cecilia's here. Cecilia, where have you been, girl? Oh my gosh. Hi, Susan. Hello, Cecilia. All right. Tony's saying that Dave and I are making it hard for him not to double dip on the Dirty Dancing Steelbook. Boo. Hey. It's hard to resist when the Target is only $16.99. That's very decent and reasonable for a steel book. Just saying, just putting it out there, $16.99. All right, Great Garlou hasn't seen Dirty Dancing in years since my cousin drove us all nuts with daily viewings. Look forward to rediscovering it. I gotta say, yeah, I do, I do have to say that I did watch. Dirty Dancing a lot when I was younger, probably more than I should have. So I had to take a break from it. I hadn't watched it in so long. And then it was actually on HBO, like randomly, I think like two, like what, a month ago or something like that. And I watched it again from beginning to end. And I was like, oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so iconic. 
All right, mid-level media saying Target better than Best Buy. You're coming in with the hot takes tonight, Susan. LOL. Yes, I am, Ken. Yes, I am. I'm always honest. If anything, I am honest always on this channel. All right. Vince almost double dipped himself. Hey, when they're good, they're good. You can't, you can't resist. Cecilia's only seen Dirty Dancing once. You got to watch it again. Chromatica is asking, is Leo DiCaprio one of my favorite actors? Do you think he won the Oscar for the right film? You know what? I haven't seen The Revenant yet. It's in the never seen it pile. Um, that's the movie he actually won the Oscar for. I got to watch it. I got to watch it. Then I can answer that question. Uh, Leo, I would probably say is in the top five for me. Leo is in the top five. Joaquin is in the top five. Joaquin Phoenix. There's only one Joaquin. Um, <laughs> I would say Leo's definitely in my top five for actors. Absolutely. No, he did not win an Oscar for Titanic. He won for The Revenant. He wasn't even nominated for Titanic. That was such a scandal because everyone else was. Kate Winslet was. The old lady was. But no Leonardo DiCaprio. He got completely snubbed. All right. Charles Ralph Olson is saying The Wolf of Wall Street is a good movie. Yes, it is. Okay. Freaky MV. Cool name as well. You ever going to give the X-Men franchise a watch? I will. Eventually. I will. Also asking, can you please try to give the Saw franchise a watch? I might. I might. I might. I Maybe. Maybe. I am going to pick up the Saw Steelbook. Because I've seen the first one. I don't mind the first one. I might give the others a shot. I don't know. You want to know why? Because I always see the Saw franchise on Blu-ray, that whole collection at Walmart for like $15. It's so reasonably cheap. I might pick it up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Okay. Cecilia saying Leo should have gotten an Oscar for Titanic. She is all about Leo and Titanic. Midlevel is saying that Rosemary's Baby is a top five horror for him. It's a classic. I've never seen it. I got to catch up. Is that on any kind of streaming service or anything? Does anyone know? Do we know if Wolf of Wall Street is on a streaming service that we can say? Is it on HBO Max? Definitely. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry. Maybe Netflix. I don't know. Someone figure it out. Ty's not here. Where's Ty? He usually knows these things. He looks them up for me. All right. Colton V is saying Leo should have gotten an Oscar for The Wolf of Wall Street. That was the performance of his career so far, in my opinion. I loved it. It was good. Yes, it was definitely it, it was memorable. It was it was. Yes, but I got to watch The Revenant. I got to say. I know Leo, it just got to the point. He was becoming the Winona writer of nominations. Like he was getting nominated so many times and it's like, just give him a goddamn Oscar already. In my opinion, he should have won for um, what's eating Gilbert Grape. I mean, come on. He was absolutely fantastic in what's eating Gilbert Grape. It actually kills me that he did not win for that. I think they didn't give it to him because he was young. And they're like, you know what? He's got time. Let's give it to Tommy Lee Jones because this might be his only ch his only chance. So let's give it to him. When I look at those two performances, Leo all the way. I'm sorry. Like I've seen The Fugitive a couple times. There's nothing that Tommy Lee Jones does that's like super fantastic to, to win the Oscar. I mean, when you look at Leo's performance, and I'm going so off topic here, but when you look at Leo's performance in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, you actually believe that he has disabilities. You act, it's, he's so good. And he like maintained that during filming. He, he didn't want to break character, which is so committed and so fantastic. Let's not even get into it. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. We already talked about What's Eating Gilbert Grape. All right. Cecilia, has anyone seen Hidden Figures? If you haven't, Susan, can you do a movie review for it? I have seen it. I have seen Hidden Figures. That's also a very, very good movie. All right. Freaky MV. Imagine not watching Stranger Things. Please watch it. Ooh, if I had time. <laughs> if I had time. Falcon's Quest is here. These names are fantastic. Falcon's Quest. Have you seen the Evil Dead movies? 
Not yet. I got them on Steelbook, though. The new one that was released, like, what, last year? I got it. I will get to it. Cool Guy is reminding us that Some Kind of Wonderful is going to have a Steelbook for Blu-ray June 8th, as is Pretty in Pink with Molly Ringwald. Yes, they will both be out on that day. All right. Vince is saying usually does Dolby in the theater because of the comfortable seats. Hell yeah. <laughs> the Dolby, they completely go backwards like this and they're so comfortable. Okay. Freaky MV, what would you be doing if you didn't make a YouTube channel? I would have a hell of a lot more time on my hands. That's for sure. Um, I honestly don't know. I don't know. Uh, YouTube, my channel, you guys have become my life and I love it. This is what I do now. And I just want to continue to grow. Guys, we're headed towards 3,300 subscribers. It's crazy insane. Thank you to all of you that are making this possible, making my dream come true. I love you. I love you all like so much. You have no idea. I like doing these live chats because we get to bond and connect and it's just so important for me. And just love you. I just love you all. Okay. <laughs> and to let you guys know, if you did not see my announcement, I have a brand new segment coming to the channel starting this coming week. This coming week, a new segment. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to get ahead of myself. But it will be up on Thursday. So be on the lookout for Thursday's video. Okay. Chromatica has heard good things about Spiral. I've only seen four of the four of the Saw movies. Haven't seen all Saw films. I feel like I'm going to torture myself if I do so. But I do enjoy gore. Well, if you enjoy gore, Saw is the franchise for you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I don't know. I'm like on... I'm on the fence about going to see Spiral. I don't know because I'm like, is it going to be too gory? Am I going to like freak out? You know, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. I wish they had the option to go on streaming because I would just watch it at home. <laughs> I would just watch it at home. Okay. Freaky MV is asking what happened to the Funko Pops. I mean, the Funko Pop collection, the Funko Pop videos. Um, I stopped collecting Funkos because it was just getting to be too much. <laughs> I, um, I have a lot in my room. I actually packed up like half of my Funko Pop wall because I don't know, it just was becoming a lot for me. So I packed it up. It's in my storage bin. No worries. It's inside temperature controlled. Nothing's going to happen to them. They're all packed away very, very nicely in their own individual boxes. Um, so they're safe. <laughs> they are safe, but I stopped the collecting because I wanted to pay off my debt. I was getting into way too much credit card debt. Got to pay that off. I'm happy to announce I paid off two credit cards. Yes, two credit cards. Three more to go. Okay, but whatever. I'm making, you know, baby steps to doing that. But two are paid off. So yay. Uh, having two collecting habits, Funko Pops and Blu-rays and Steelbooks was kind of a lot. So I had to, one had to go. Bye-bye, Funko Pops. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm keeping them. I'm just not getting any more, that is. Okay. But thank you for asking. Chris Kinsella is saying that Nobody is a great film. I enjoyed the film Nobody. That'll be coming out for physical media purchase shortly. All right. Great Garlou, double dipping, LOL. Try quadruple dipping for Battle Royale and every Godzilla film. I've never uh, quadruple dipped. <laughs> I've never done that. Durant is known for like, you know, is there a word for 10 times dipping? Because he has so many copies of John Wick 3 and all, and all that and anything Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't think I have anything like that. I, I, have, I don't have anything where I'm like, I have like 10 copies of one movie. Okay. Cecilia is excited for the horror film Old. Yes, that is M. Night Shyamalan's new movie that will be coming out. I have not watched Underworld yet, Constance. Thank you for asking. I have not watched it yet. It is in the pile. It is in the never seen it. Okay, cool guy is saying The Wolf of Wall Street. Don't, don't think it's on streaming. 
Yeah, we got to look that up. Someone look it up. <laughs> Someone look it up. All right, Mr. Scott is saying that The Revenant is a masterpiece. Well, I got to watch it. Chromatica is saying, in my opinion, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio won for the wrong films. Unfortunately, that happens. I haven't seen the movie that Kate Winslet won her Oscar for. All right, Destiny is letting us know that Wolf of Wall Street is on Peacock. Okay, if anyone has it. Peacock, of all places, is on Peacock. All right. Oh, it's not on Peacock any Destiny, you got us all hyped up for Peacock. Now it's not on there anymore. Oh, well. Oh, well. Well, hopefully you'll be able to watch The Wolf of Wall Street somehow, some way. I bought my Blu-ray, I think, at Target for like $5. It was a really reasonable thing. So if you guys really are jonesing to see it, you can probably purchase it for like $5, $10 maybe. I don't know. You should get it. It's a great movie directed by Scorsese. One of the best directors of our time. Leo's in it. Margot Robbie. It's a great film. Okay. All right. We got about five more minutes. All right. Destiny's letting us know that Wolf of Wall Street isn't on any streaming service unless you pay. Okay. Well, now we have that answer. I thought it was on a streaming service. It probably was for a while and it just got kicked off. This is why we collect physical media, guys, right? If we want to watch The Wolf of Wall Street, you got to have your physical media copy. I have this, and then I have my steelbook, just in case something happens to this. I'm all set. I don't have to worry. All right, Mr. Scott is letting me know that Stranger Things will blow my mind. It's where he loved Millie Bobby Brown ever since. Please watch it on your time. Whew, I got I don't have time. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't have time. Maybe eventually. Maybe eventually. Owen Movie 75 saying The Departed is my favorite movie of all time. I love DiCaprio in that movie. Good one. Good one. Another Scorsese pick. Yes. All right. Destiny, <laughs> off topic, but can someone recommend a good place to get a, a suitcase from for cheap? Please let Destiny know where she can get a cheap suitcase of good quality. Okay, mid-level media saying more time on your hands. Ain't that the damn truth? Yeah, it is. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it. I love it. But it's like, I got no time for anything else. What am I going to do when like my boyfriend is back in the picture? Like my boyfriend slash ex-husband, like, what am I going to do? When am I going to see him? I don't know because I'm busy all the time making YouTube videos or this is why I don't post videos on the weekends on Fridays or Saturdays. I got to have some me time for myself. All right. Chromatica is saying, we love you. We love you to Susan. You're the best. Oh, thank you. Just to let you know, guys, I have not seen any hating comments because Tony has been doing such a great job of hiding them, deleting them. So Tony, thank you. <laughs> I have not seen anything bad or anything awful. Nice for a change because like the past couple weeks, I've been seeing the little pig emojis and all that. And that's been getting on my nerves. So <laughs> it's nice not to have those. Okay. Okay, video store review, getting back to get out. He's like, okay, stop talking about everything else. Uh, did anyone notice how Chris's girlfriend appears to defend him when the cop asks for his license? However, this is really because she doesn't want a paper trail of evidence. See, that's something you don't realize until you watch it again. That's what's great. Again, what I said, going back and watching it and seeing the pictures behind her and never noticed that before. Little things like that. Absolutely. Good catch. Good catch. Vince is definitely going to see Spiral. Tony is saying, yeah, seriously, who hates on Susan, Dave, Martin, or anyone in this chat? You're all wonderful. Much love. Oh, thanks, Tony. Tony's on our side. All right. My mom is saying uh, to, to Ken, to mid-level, people don't know how much time goes into this. 
yeah, a lot of time, a lot of time goes into doing this, but we love it. We love it. So that's fine. Freaky MV. Hey, Susan, you think you can do a Venom 2 trailer reaction? I probably will. I hear it's coming tomorrow. I am working tomorrow, but I will probably do a, re oh, I am book solid tomorrow. So now I got a trailer react to Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, Weekend Watch, and What's New for Blue. Ah, I'm going to be so busy tomorrow. <laughs> I will probably do that. Yeah, rumor is the trailer for Venom 2 is out tomorrow. Great Garlou is saying, Susan, just be glad you don't collect Godzilla toys. That's a ride that never ends. I I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I don't. Yes, yay! Two credit cards paid. Yes, Destiny, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Okay. Right. Freaky MV is saying, as a huge fan of Saw myself, I can tell you that once you get through Saw 1 through 3, your brain will just get used to the blood and gore to the point in which it'll make you laugh. That's that's true. I am noticing that I'm like building up a tolerance to, to horror movies now because I have been watching some and it's like it's getting, okay, more commonplace, like things that are happening. I'm like, whatever. Kind of funny, kind of hilarious. Like I was so scared to watch Nightmare on Elm Street because I just had like this preconceived notion of the movie and Freddy Krueger. And I'm like, I don't know if I can watch this. I'm gonna be too scared. So this past week I watched it and I was actually like laughing some of the time because I'm like, is this serious right now? <laughs> like I understand it's like a horror classic. It's Wes Craven. It's a horror classic. I get it. But like the majority of it, I was like, what is this? It's so ridiculous. So I can definitely, I understand. So maybe I'll pick it up. Who knows? Maybe I'll pick it up. Okay. Freaky MV is letting us know that the Wolf of Wall Street is free with ads on Pluto TV. <laughs> Trust me. Yes. Free. Okay. So Pluto TV, I guess, is our only option for streaming the Wolf of Wall Street. All right. Joseph. Joseph coming in right under the wire of, of the live is the physical media of Nomadland out. It's not out in stores. You can buy um, Nomadland online. Bestbuy.com, Target.com. For some reason, I don't know why, it's not out in stores. So I'm going to wait on it for the price to go down and then I'll I'll probably order it which is really weird. I don't know why they wouldn't sell it in stores. It's our new best picture winner. You would think they would want to sell it in stores. I have no idea. Okay. We're all about the physical media. Yes, we are. Okay. Tony's saying include my boyfriend in the videos. I don't know. He's not like... <sighs> I don't want to become a channel. Okay. Can I tell you one of my pet peeves, like real pet peeve? I hate when like I watch a YouTube channel that is like about one person, about a specific thing, but then they like all of a sudden find themselves in a relationship and like their boyfriend or girlfriend is now in like every single video and it's all about them as a couple. I don't like that whatsoever. Like there's no way I'm going to have him be in every single one of my videos. That is not happening. Number one, I'm the star. Number two, I'm a control freak. And number three, honestly, he's not that entertaining. <laughs> if anything, maybe I'll include him in a couple like Blu-ray hunting videos or something like every once in a while, but like not on the regular. Absolutely not. Because I would not want to do that to you guys. You guys are here for the Blu-rays, the physical media, and for me. Okay, like you didn't sign up for my spouse, my boyfriend, whoever I'm with. You know what I mean? I hate it when influencers do that. It really gets on my nerves. There's someone that I used to really watch all the time. I'm not going to say her name, her name. I'm not going to say her name, but like now she has a boyfriend and like her boyfriend's in like every single one of her videos. It's so annoying. I don't really watch her videos anymore, to be honest. I kind of considered unsubscribing because I'm just like, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. 
Okay. Jose Sanchez saying, hey, what's up, Stu? What's up? Okay. Guys, we're going to wrap this up soon. I'm just trying to get through the rest of these comments. My mom saying Sue does love doing this so much and I love watching movies with her. I know it's like our little bonding time. I love sharing movies with my mother. I love talking to her about movies and I hate to say like educating her because it's like I'm not a teacher or anything, but you know, it's just, it's like our time to bond because you know, we're not bonded enough already. We're two peas. We're two peas in the same pod. Me and Mama Sita. Okay. All right, Martin, Susan, I really want to meet you one day and it would be such an honor. Uh, you deserve a lot of love and spread the joy to tons of fans. We thank you for that. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Maybe someday we can have Susan Khan or something, a meet and greet. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Oh, my mom uh, saying, I think I just saw mid-level going live now. Jump over to him when Sue is done. Thank you very much. When I am done. Um, I just saw the next question and it made me like pause for a second. But yeah, uh, if you are not subscribed to mid-level media already, please do. He just crossed 2K subscribers, which is awesome. So please subscribe to mid-level he does amazing Blu-ray hunting videos, reviews. He does great live chats. I was recently on one of his live chats and it was so much fun. It was great. The Susan Army really showed up for the live chat, which is freaking awesome. You guys are amazing. So if you are not subscribed to him, please go over. All right. Um, I am not dating Durant Cinema. <laughs> Someone said, are you dating Durant Cinema? If so, why not? I am not dating him. Um, we live in two separate states. That's a big factor. Uh, no, the second reason, I don't think he would be, I don't think I would be his type. Let's just put him like that. We're friends. We're friends. We connected on social media. Obviously, I watched his videos. You know, he inspired me to start doing this. It took my channel in a completely different direction. And I'll always be thankful for him to that for that. And so I connected with him on social media one day and we started talking. I said, do you want to collab for a Blu-ray hunt? And we did. And we've done two now, two collabs. We will continue to do more. It's just super convenient that he's just one state away and we can, you know, meet up, which is awesome. But no, we are not dating. <laughs> we are not dating. All right. My mom's saying, let's go bombard him. Oh, mid-level, I'm assuming you mean? <laughs> yeah. Everyone just go to Ken's live chat when this is all done. Andrew Fio just got off work, had to say hi. Hello, Andrew. What's my favorite Jim Carrey movie? Oh, God. I honestly don't have a favorite Jim Carrey movie. He's not an actor that I gravitate towards. And I'm like, yes, I have a favorite movie of yours. But I, like I said on Ken's live that I was on, because this was a question. I just watched this past Christmas, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey version, and I really liked it. I stayed away from it for a really long time because I was like, no, you cannot go with The Grinch. The original is classic. You cannot do that. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. All right, Great Garlou is saying, Susan, I hear you about not including your boyfriend in the videos. A YouTuber I watched broke up with his girlfriend and he deleted every single video she appeared in. Yeah, exactly. Like, what if it doesn't work out or something? You know, like, what am I going to do? Delete all my content? I'm not doing that. Next week's movies, Wolf of Wall Street, guys. Cecilia, Susan, do you plan on making vlogs? I vlog every Tuesday for Blu ray hunting. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, Freaky MV, you think you can do a collaboration with Cool Duder? I am trying to convince Dave Durant, me and him, to do like this massive Blu ray Hunter like video. I said, me, him, Wet Movie One, Cool Duder, the guys from um, Wasting Money One, they're like the OGs of Blu ray hunting. I know they like broke up for a little bit, but I think they're friends again. Like, if we all got together, Ken, mid-level media, 
4K media guy, like all of us like Blu-ray hunters got together and did a hunt together, that would be epic. <laughs> that would be like the best of the best coming together for a massive Blu-ray hunt. I think it'd be goddamn fantastic. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let me know. Yes, Dave and I are like brother and sister. <laughs> I could tease him, he could tease me, whatever. We text all the time. Okay. All right, great girl Lou saying Wasting Money One is a cool guy. I like him. Wet Movie One is a cringe fest, but he's a good guy. Well, I mean, you know, they're the OGs. They were they were like the original. They've been on YouTube doing Blu-ray hunting and you know, movie focused videos for a really, really long time. You gotta give the respect to the OGs. So you gotta have a couple, a couple OGs for the the Blu-ray hunting all-star potential video. You got to have them in there. You got to pay respect. It's like an homage. All right. Video store review saying good idea for the hunt. But what if you all saw the same rare Blu-ray and it turns into a bloodbath? You know what? That potentially happened in my last collab with Durant and Tony and Rob when... <laughs> I saw the American Werewolf in London Steelbook and FYE and they didn't see it and I just dove for it and I got it. I went right in between Tony and Rob, I believe, and I boop, picked it up off the Steelbook rack. It was the only one there, by the way. I will, I will cut you. <laughs> I will. For a Steelbook, I will get in there. If it's something that I want, the friendship will cease for 30 seconds. Someone will get it. It happens. It happens. Okay. All right, Tony, you're getting the last comment of the night because you worked hard today <laughs> in getting rid of the bullies and the trolls. Uh, <laughs> hmm. I'll help out in convincing Dave to get that collab going. And he also said, Susan will throw down for a steel book. Yes, I will. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. We had a lot of people. Oh, Douglas, Douglas. Guess I was too late. Douglas, I'm sorry, Douglas. Steel, you just joined. Guys, I'm signing off. We went a little bit longer tonight because all of you guys showed up. We still have 35 people here. That is awesome. Thank you so much for popping in tonight. Wednesday night, I will see you Wednesday night for the next live chat. The topic, I don't know yet. Nothing. I don't know. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. Maybe it'll just be a regular... Ask me anything, Q&A, I am not sure, but be on the lookout for all my videos upcoming this week. And then also the new segment video on Thursday. So have a great night, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.